Okay, one more video on our guide series. So for this one, we are going to once again upload our data. This time it's Casper wind speeds and miles per hour. And we're also looking at the weather type. Okay, so let's go and import that in real quick. And we will double check to make sure that it gets in correctly. And it looks like I've got my wind speeds and I've got my weather type. It looks good to me. Okay, so what we've got here is we're asking basically for a whole bunch of summary statistics. Um, not all of them are here. If you notice, kind of uh, mode is missing. Mode really is a number that is useful for like discrete random variables or categorical data. If you really want to find the mode, go ahead and open up the, a frequency table and you can figure out which one is most occurring. Okay, so here we've got like mean, median, standard deviation. We could do these by hand, or we've got some things that would really help us speed it up um, by just letting our commander do it. So we can go into our basic statistics, our descriptive statistics, and we can come all the way down to numerical summaries. Once we have numerical summaries selected, we can then come into our statistics and we can select what we want. So mean is something that we want. Median is another thing that we want. And if we notice down in the quantiles, we actually have median. It's kind of hidden. It's the 50% point. So that would give us our median. Standard deviation looks like it's going to give us there. Variation, we don't have selected, but we can show you how to get it. Uh, max and the min, 0 and 1 on the quantiles will give us the max and the min. Range we can calculate. And then the proportion of rain or the snow days. We'll have to take a look at that um, and we can, we can find that as well. But let's go ahead and start off with these guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. All right, so it kicks out these various numbers for me. Let me go ahead and blow this up real quick. Make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so we have the mean and we've got the mean right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this straight over uh, into my open math. Now it says round to three decimal places. It just needs to be accurate to three decimal places. If we have some extra decimals, we should be okay. Um, so we've got the mean and let's go ahead and grab the median, copy and paste. Okay, standard deviation, if it's this little SD, standard deviation, that's what we want there. We'll copy that and drop it in. All right, now the next, the one that we have here that we are a little bit hesitant on is the variation. How do we get the variation? Or the variance. Uh, so the variance, uh, I actually need to fix that. Yeah, it should be the variance, not just the variation. I will fix uh, this title. Just give me a second. Okay, good. I got it fixed now. It says variance. Okay, so the variance, remember, is equal to, we take the standard deviation and we square it. So that's all that we're going to need to do here. So I am going to take the standard deviation. I'm going to paste it and I'm going to square it. Now, one thing that we need to be careful of is we, uh, we it's possible for us to get balled up with rounding errors. Um, now, we have a couple of ways that we can help us get around that. Probably the easiest way is to just make sure that we use a lot of decimal places uh, when we do our squaring. Um, there are a few ways that, that we can do that. So since we're only being accurate to three decimal places, we should be okay for squaring out to six. But if we're wanting more decimal places, what we can do is we can type in a little bit of code inside of our studio. We can type in uh, options uh, digits equals, and 12 is usually ridiculous, like it's way too many, um, but it works. So I'm just going to do options digits equals 12. I'm going to hit enter. And now from here, I'm just going to rerun my code again. So I'll go to my basic statistics, numerical summaries, and click OK. And now notice how many more decimal places I have. I've got a lot more. So now for my standard deviation, when I go ahead and square it, I'll give it just a second. Let's copy this again. 
and we paste it down here. When I square this guy, notice how close it is. I mean, we're really close. We only start getting really into problems at the very last decimal, uh, but this is more accurate than up above. It's rare that we have this problem, but occasionally it does. So if you need to play around with how many extra decimal places you have, this is the bit of code that you need. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, this guy too. There we go, copy it. And then I can paste that into the variance. Fantastic. All right, the maximum, we can just come down here and take a look at the maximum. We're just going to take the 100% value. We'll, we'll copy that guy and paste it. And the minimum is the zero. We can copy and paste that guy. Okay, now as we're doing this, if we want the range, all it is, range is just the maximum minus the minimum. So let's grab our maximum. Give me just a second, there we go. Maximum, and we can subtract from it the minimum, and we'll paste it down there. And there we go, we have our, oh, I'm having problems copying this guy right now. Oh, that's okay, for right now, I'll just type it out, which would be 24, 0.204. Okay, so the last one that we need to do is figure out this proportion of rain or snow days. Uh, we don't have that one yet, uh, but we can pull it out. So what we can do is we can look at still our basic statistics. And what we can do is there's a couple ways that we can go about doing this. I'm going to do it from the numerical summaries. And this time, instead of just looking at the stuff for the Casper wind speeds as a whole, I'm going to break it up by weather type. And so when I click OK now, now I've got the actual, the sample size of the clear and the rain and the snow. So if you had, if I had this spread out over a bigger page, these two kind of blocks would be in a single line, go straight across. It's okay that it's like this. But what I have here is that I've got 19 were clear and 16 were rain or snow. So if I wanna know this proportion, of the rain or the snow days, I can do 16 divided by, and then I'm going to do 16 plus 19 because it's out of the total. Or I know that the total from a previously was this 35. And when I hit enter, I have this new, uh, this new proportion. And let's go ahead and copy that. And we can paste it here. And I think I've got, yeah, really bleed out things. But that's my proportion of the rain or the snow days. Okay, great. So now I'm going to go down to my stretch question. So it says on the recorded days, uh, where uh, were the rain, snow, or the clear found to have a higher mean wind speed? All right, so it's just asking me to do a simple comparison. So we can look at the means for the clear and the rain. And for my particular one, the rain or snow had a, on average, higher wind speed. Okay, there we go. Next question, of the recorded days, were the rain, snow, or the clear found to have a higher standard deviation wind speed? Okay, so we look at the standard deviations, and here the clear actually had a higher standard deviation. So, just click on the clear. But now consider that if the next day was added to the list, which had a wind speed of 100, or 100 miles per hour, all right, that is way bigger than all this other stuff. Which would be more effective? I'm actually gonna leave this one for you guys uh, to do on your own. Uh, this one, you should be able to find from talking back about our means and our medians, how they're calculated, and which one is more affected by an outlier. So I'm gonna leave this one alone. Okay, the next one it says, so defend your answer. Once again, I wanna leave that guy alone. And down here it says, let's assume that the daily wind speed uh, distribution in the sample mean, the sample standard deviation are really population values. Considering the 100 mile an hour wind speed, how many standard deviations above the mean is that outlier? Okay, now if we remember this, uh, this is a little bit on how do we handle normal distributions. 
So if we think that this follows a normal distribution and we assume that the mean and the standard deviation uh, are in fact instead the population mean and standard deviation, uh, what we want to know is how much, how weird is this 100 mile an hour storm? Okay, well we can do that. We have our equation and with the specific one that we want is the z-score because the z-score tells us the number of standard deviations and the direction for how much, um, for how many standard deviations away from the mean we are. And the more standard deviations away we are, the stranger and stranger of a result that that we have. And typically we think of something as strange or kind of like atypical, like not normal, is usually past two standard deviations. Okay, so let's go ahead and calculate this out. We're going to take these from up here because we're going to, it says, it doesn't uh, say that we should break it down into either clear or kind of our stormy days, but let's go ahead and grab it from up here. So this is our mean copy that and what we want to do is we want to do the 100 our observation minus our mean and we want to divide from it the standard deviation now once again we kind of had to cheat we had to I say assuming that those ones that the sample mean and sample standard deviation are really the population values uh, so instead of being like x bar and s, we're assuming that they are instead mu and sigma. And we'll just go ahead and hit enter. And here we have that it is 17.4267, for sure. Standard deviations away from the mean. Uh, that is extraordinarily large. Uh, and then down here it says still considering that 100 mile per hour wind speed, what is that z-score? Uh, I'll let you guys uh, figure this one out. Uh, hint, it's not very hard at all. Anyhow, so let's go ahead and submit those and see how we did. Uh, yep, we didn't get those ones because we didn't answer that. We didn't get that one because we didn't answer that one. Left that one up for you guys to figure out what its z-score was as well. So anyhow, that's all that I've got for our kind of summary uh, data. Good luck.